All righty, there we go. Meeting is being live streamed. It's being recorded. Ah, yes, we're recording as well. And we're all ready to go here for our little Monday session that we like to uh, like to engage in because a bunch of nice people call us and we have a good time and what the hell, why not? So uh, let me see, we only have, uh, wow, we only have uh, three right now. Well, we'll let them in anyway. Oh, wait a minute. You know something? I just noticed it's a little early. <laughs> I signed on a minute early. Oh, God. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. This is a very casual program. So let's admit whoever's here already. Uh, there we go. There's Jeff Stein, Edward Berger, Charlie Wallace is joining us. And uh, now we have more coming in. We have Scott Boddicker and Vernon Nunn is uh, coming here. Uh, and oh, guess what? Uh, we've got uh, we've got uh, Shecky. Uh, I can, I can see that he's oh, coming in. On. Let me see here. Uh, uh, there we go. There's there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Alive. He's alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's connecting to his audio, so he can't hear you yet. Oh, okay. There we go. Yes, he's alive, ladies and gentlemen. Shecky is alive. <laughs> Yes, I didn't fall off the ship. Yeah. <laughs> we were worried more about COVID. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were, we were, they, they were all worried about you. I know, but I think, you know, you've heard me tell you it had the worst internet in the history of cruising this ship. Yeah. So that's why he didn't call us from the ship. But you did call me on FaceTime. At some, at that one time I was able to get through. And you showed me the water going by and out your, on your deck. Yeah. 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 So we could see you uh, 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 doing what you were doing. You're really, uh, you were having a nice, it looked like you were having a nice time. It was decent. It was not spectacular, but it was not the worst trip I've ever taken in my life. But I, I, you know, I, somebody said, why does Shecky do these things? And I say to relax and I'm going, yeah, but we've had COVID for the last year and a half. You've had a lot of time to relax. Yeah. But you know, as I told you, I would get my book. I would go find a deck chair by the pool. I would just sit there and read and order a cocktail. And I told you that he joked the final day, the pool attendant walks by me and going, how are you doing today, Mr. Double Gray Goose? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible to be known as Mr. Double Gray Goose. <laughs> well, because if you, if you had a drink or were eating, you could take your mask off. So I would always try to have a cocktail sitting by me. Yeah. Here comes Steve Bender. Here comes Steve Bender. Uh, we're just the birthday boy, birthday boy. Is it his birthday oh, today? Yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Oh, okay. Oh, belated happy birthday, Steve. Belated happy birthday, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank How you. old are you now? I am. Uh, it, was, it was my Medicare birthday. <laughs> oh, 65. Correct. Yes. Welcome to a new world. How, how come yeah. every how come everybody is younger than I am? Gee, I'm getting sick of this. I want somebody. Will somebody please call the show that's older than I am? Oh, I need to get my mother on here. She's 94, so that'd be is good. She 94? <laughs> somebody, anybody over 82, please call the show. Don't make me feel like I'm an old fart here. You know. Uh, 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 but hey, come on, you're still getting it done. I'm, yeah, I'm still getting it done, right? I'm still getting it done, right, Marjorie? Well, I'm right, I can't, I'm not on yet. Yes, you are. Well, I can't get all the pictures. There we can. What was the question? <laughs> what was the question again? Uh, uh, are, you are you still getting it on or whatever? Getting, still getting it, it done. done. <laughs> getting it done. Getting what on? Done, done, not on, done. <laughs> You know, I mean, come on. You know, I had that. Tell me, I want to know. I had that operation a while back, and <laughs> it uh, pretty well beat up my my uh, my prostate like it was a punching bag. You know. Anyway, so uh, uh, yeah, so here we are. 
all assembled. Um, and yes. I, what I was saying about what I, this, I know it's kind of depressing, but I'll, I'll bring it up anyway. The other day, I was doing some setting something up and it said, who do you want on your contacts? And it went through my whole contact list and had me decide who I wanted to have easy calling to like Shecky. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a thing. It was one of these Google home machines we got for free because it was a, a, um, what did we get? It came with the stove. It, <laughs> oh, it didn't come with the stove. It came ahead of the it stove. It was a hundred. It was a, a bonus thing. hundred dollar bonus, thing. right? And it's Google Home. It's terrible. I mean, it really is not as good as it, it, to begin with. It isn't as good as uh, Alexa. Her, her uh, yeah. Hey, her. Alexa. Echo. Alexa, because Echo. Uh, it doesn't have a camera. You have to buy a camera separate for it. Oh, thank you, Google. Anyway, so I'm just setting it up just to see how it works and so on. And uh, I, I, and it's asking me, it's going through my contact list. And I'm going through my contact list. And I'm going, he's dead, she's dead, he's <laughs> dead, she's dead. And I started going through it and going, this is fucking depressing. Yeah. Well, Bob, Bobby Slayton just tweeted the same thing you just said. Well, because I, I wrote him last night and oh. said that. So he, um, he, he, uh, he went through his book and it got rid of all the dead people plus some people he doesn't need anymore <laughs> you know no i'm mean, it probably dumped my name uh anyway um and i should get rid of some of those too because i got a lot in there that i went who's that yeah i don't know who that is you know somebody give me his phone number or something like that i wish i wish somebody happy birthday today on facebook and it shows you upcoming birthdays and the next two people coming up are both dead <laughs> okay, <maybe. laughs> see, see what i'm talking about yeah maybe it's time to get rid of them <laughs> but i just had another guy die uh who was a good friend years and years ago and i liked a lot and in fact they put an interview i did with him up on uh, up on facebook uh was right under this yeah. uh and with uh, an interview with the uh, bob saget that was really good Where, when did you do that that was in 1908. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 2008. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. It was very good. He seemed like a really nice guy. He was. He was a very nice guy. And he was a very funny, dirty comedian. Mm -hmm. I love it, him. His aristocrats, I think, steals the movie. I went, I went and listened to it just now. His, so so did I. So did his, I. his reciting of the aristocrat joke is so it's filthier than anybody else's, no matter how hard they tried. Yep. Better than Gilbert. More than Gilbert. Yeah. I mean, and you gotta go a long way to top Gilbert's uh, uh rendition of that joke. I got uh, the people that in 1982. What you what? I got to meet Bob Saget in 1982. Yeah, nice guy, right? He really was. He spent over an hour talking with us. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. He was. Because I laughed so hard at his show. Yeah. He came up and shook my hand afterwards, and then ended up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I it, and they found him in a hotel room. This is a, this is the way to go. They found him in a hotel room in Orlando, I think, where he was working. Uh, because he'd been working the Florida circuit for the last year or so. And they found him in a hotel room, dead. No drugs, no foul play, nothing like that. And he that. did a two-hour show the night that night that he passed. Wow. Really? I didn't read that part of it. Yeah, he, he, he had tweeted about the show the night before, the, yeah. right before he passed. Like three and like at 3.30 in the morning, he tweeted yep. that I just, I can't believe it. I just did two hours. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the answer to all of that is uh, he probably had a had a heart attack, oh. you know, or a stroke or something. It just went, you know. Yeah. God, I don't know. Would I want to go that way? Yeah. I, I'd want to say good. No, but I'd like to say goodbye to people first. Well, yeah, but just, that's not a bad way to go, Alex. Then just do it every day, just in case. Well, I read oh, yeah. years ago that that um, uh, Ingrid Bergman, when she was dying, went back to Sweden and said goodbye to everybody. She knew she was dying, and she wanted to go say goodbye to everybody, and she said goodbye to her, all her friends. I And I always thought that was kind of nice, 
Yeah, well, do it now. Well, <laughs> Bye. Well, I told I've told Marjorie, you know, that we should be nice to each other every day because the yeah. next day one of us could drop dead, and then the last thing we remember is you told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> you know, and you so, did. <laughs> and then I see I've been worrying about death lately. This it, it, uh, this always bothers me. I'm like, here it goes. You you know about it, Checky. I'm just I'm just in dread of death okay yeah well uh, you see we had we had another death today oh. another one robert durst oh, robert durst robert yeah. durst. not will durst, oh, robert durst. durst. I, mean, I went in and i told Murder, Marjorie, murderer, I said, robert, robert durst. durst is dead and he went oh he was such a nice guy i said not will durst <laughs> robert durst <laughs> yes well, Murderer Robert Durst died after three months in prison. Oh, gee. That's huh. not justice. Oh, no. he just, did he just go to prison? Yeah. 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 He was convicted about two, three months ago. Yeah. yeah. And was in prison when he. So they gave him life in prison died. or four months, whichever comes first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you want to hear something interesting? I found um, this interview um, with Saget. And he says in this interview, yes. listen to this, my dad's 88. He had four brothers. They all died of heart attacks. They were 40, 41, 42, and 47. Whoa. One was facing kids who stole his tire. One was playing tennis. One was lying on his couch and the last one in a hospital. My father himself had two heart attacks when I was growing up. My mom kept him alive. I never expected to live this long. And that was when he was 50. Yeah. Well, so he had a history. The family had a history of heart disease. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm uh, betting that's what they're going to discover. Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably, it, it, it probably what it was, you know. Um, nobody had any, my, the problem is in my family, they, there was no history of that kind of thing, obviously. That's the problem. That's not a problem. That's well, good. That's not a problem. <laughs> my mother lived to be, lived to be a hundred and a half. Yeah. Yeah. But your dad died young. Yes, but he didn't die of a heart attack. He, he died of a pituitary tumor, mm. which today would not kill you. Uh, today, they know how to operate on it. In those days, the pituitary is if you take your finger and you put it up here and you put your finger in the middle of your forehead where they intersect, that's where your, where your pituitary is. And to get to it, in those days, they had to go through your brain to get to it. And it, it, that, that would maybe take out memories of your prom or something, you know, <laughs> and, and it was an almost so. impossible task to do. My father died of the pituitary tumor. He had the operation, but they couldn't get to it. And, you know, today, a couple of years later, about 10 years later, I met up with a woman I was, went out with and she says, you know, I, a couple of years ago, I had a pituitary tumor. No, my father died of a pituitary tumor. He, she said, well, how? They, they operate on him now. And I said, well, yeah, they did them, but it was very dangerous. And she said, no, they discovered that if they go up through the roof of the mouth, yeah. they can get right to it. So mm -hmm. if you have a pituitary tumor today, boom, bingo. It's, go, yeah. you're, it's over and done with. You know about this, right, Charlie? Yeah, my dad's a doctor. Was. Yeah, but, yeah. was a doctor. Yeah, but I mean... that. that by the way, did we have we told your secrets, Charlie? I guess we have on this show. Yeah. About your past. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I get more amazed by you every time I hear about you. In the, <laughs> in the beginning, I just thought you were some kind of doofus caller. That's right. <laughs> okay. yeah. And then I find out you were recruited by the CIA. You have how many PhDs or something? I don't have any PhDs. I have a master's degree in astrophysics. Uh, yeah right that's very cool <laughs> like ryan may of uh of a queen yeah did yeah. you did you work in astrophysics no i mean i taught in graduate school for three years but uh after that i ended when i decided not to go on for my phd i started concentrating on computer science and my my career was in it information technology yeah wow and and today he he uh, uh coaches umpires or whatever yeah yeah i'm the secretary of the austin softball umpires association secretary treasurer yeah well we're, we're charlie and i are mortal enemies this weekend because yeah the 49ers are playing the cowboys, cowboys. So. <laughs> 
Yep. Should be a good game. It should be a good game. I can't believe they beat the Rams last night. What are you week. eating, dear? Potato chips. Of course. Would you care to bring me in a couple? Here. <laughs> <laughs> Those are Stu Leonard's potato chips. Yes. No, uh, right brother. there. Isn't he going to be pissed off that you took them? <laughs> well, okay, wait a so minute. Hold, only, on. Hold on a second. Degrees. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Charlie, there's only two degrees of separation between you and me. I've got a master's degree. I'm come in for potatoes. I've got a master's degree in electrical engineering, and my career was spent programming man machine interfaces. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, there we are. Uh, hey. Here we go. I'll be That's back. It? Yeah. <laughs> Did he leave you any, Marjorie? Huh? Did he leave you any? The president take well, the back. Yeah. He took them all. And they're all over the floor. Ah. <laughs> Look how long it takes him to get from room. Yeah. How big is that fucking apartment? <laughs> <laughs> 2,500 square feet. LED <laughs> TV. Here we go. Ah. That's bigger than my house, Marky. Yeah. <laughs> That's about what it's I have here. Apartment. Yeah, I guess. It's all one Do you floor. ever get these, Jackie, when you go to Stu Leonard's, these potato chips? No. You, you tell me they're great, but I've never bought them. They're really oh. sensational. They make them right there. Yeah, they're mm. freshly made. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Here, here, here comes Kettle Top Boddicker with some. Got some popcorn in You guys made me oh. hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Rubies. Ruby mm. Royal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's all just sit here and chew. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a nice show. This is We just have a nice time with each other here. <laughs> Yeah. How are things down in Kentucky there, Vernon? Oh, things are recovering very, very slowly because of the cold weather and the snow down in western Kentucky where all the tornadoes hit. You know what you're going to find, though, once the summer comes and stuff like that, is how fast areas recover. I mean, like I had the earthquake where I lived in San Francisco. Mm. The entire neighborhood was decimated. A year later, you wouldn't know it. You know? Yeah, that was really something to go down to the cypress structure about a week afterwards and see that thing pancaked. Jesus, that was a very powerful. But really not. within a year, they had it all pulled down and a road built and everything, you know. I know, it's true. It's true. We're like little ants, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we just, uh, we, we get it done. Is that what led to the re uh, removal of the... Uh, the interstate highway that used to run along the coastline there the embarcadero yes exactly well the yeah. embarcadero in san francisco we had a what, what happened was An elevated highway in the old days if you look at an old 1906 uh movie that's very famous of a trough of the cable car going down the street market street in san francisco yeah. the very end is the ferry building yeah yeah and when I was growing up, you looked down Market Street, and what was at the end? The ferry building. Yeah. Then they built the Embarcadero Freeway, and it went right in front of the, uh, the ferry <laughs> building, uh, yeah. which was the worst aesthetic choice they could have made. It was easy to get off the bridge and get right into town, though, using that. So, you know, uh, but yeah, yeah but it, but but finally, when the earthquake happened, it collapsed or something, and they tore it down. Yep. Yeah. God was speaking. <laughs> yeah, it was God's way of sorting things out. Yeah, exactly. You know, and the fact that that happened right during the World Series when everybody was home watching the, the game because the A's and the Giants were in it. That's why it was so quiet on that freeway that night. Otherwise, there would have been a lot more people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way, by the way, uh, we just hit, we hit a milestone here in New York City. How many, a million people in how many weeks? 14 days. 14 days, million people, COVID. Over I mean, a million. I know a lot of people that have it right now. We you were exposed. I think this is the end of COVID. 
I think that this is like everybody, all these people are getting it. Well, if they didn't get a vaccination, nature is vaccinating them. Yeah. You know, I saw on the news today that uh, AOC got it on her trip to Florida for a vacation. (laughs) I ain't going to Florida. I'm I'm surprised Shecky came. I'm not going to an airport. No. No. You didn't. You didn't. Well, well, Alex, you, I told you, Miami International Airport was like being in the Wild West. (laughs) Everything was open. Anything you want, you know, and it's a mob scene. Then I get to LaGuardia. And it's a ghost town. Mm. <laughs> did yeah. people have did people have COVID on your ship, Shecky? Eleven people, at least that I was told, got it because our first stop was Aruba, mm. and these eleven idiots went on a submarine ride. Oh, I've, I've, actually been, <laughs> I've actually been on that thing. It's amazing, but yeah, that's pretty stupid. I take I took it like fifteen years ago, or yeah. I don't know how long ago, but you know. So they, because to go to Barbados, you had to be swabbed Mm. and they apparently tested positive and then were quarantined. But three other ports wouldn't let it dock Mm. and they apparently tested positive. And then three Mm. other ports wouldn't let it dock Mm. and they apparently tested positive. Wait a minute, I'm trying to get rid of uh, the, oh, okay. I I, I went over to my... uh, (laughs) <laughs> my if it was okay and i didn't mute the facebook page and i was it was doubling over there yeah no but 11 people apparently tested positive and were quote quarantined in their cabin so you were not allowed into how many ports three three ports three ports which i i never got off the ship the entire uh, trip okay because they're ports yeah i've been to all these ports before right you know right. like but what's funny is so we're getting swabbed for Barbados, but because Barbados is a big shopping town, guess mm-hmm. where we got to duck? Barbados. Barbados. Wait a minute, let me ask you a question here. So they swab you, right? How long yeah. does it take before they get the results? They gave it to me the final, let's say four o'clock the next day. Four o'clock. But I had to, I told you, I had the PCR test at my cousin's house. Well, as soon as I arrived, he hired somebody who comes out to your house to give you the PCR test, right? We had the results by the woman came about 7 p.m. Monday night. We had the results by 10 a.m. Tuesday. Okay. So, you, you know, but you passed all of your PCR tests. I had, well, no, I had one PCR and two swabs and passed all of them. Okay, did you have to study? <laughs> yes, I have a graduate degree in nasal swabs. <laughs> we bought, Marjorie, you bought us uh, t- t- two, two sets of swabs. Uh, two um, kits, and each yeah. kit has two tests. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, brought one of, I brought one of those with me in case I felt like I needed it. Mm. Yeah. There was, uh, there's no way out. You can't find one out here anywhere. They are absolutely sold out. Same here. But forever to get You them. know what it is? When things like this happen, I mean, like, for instance, they, 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 there's a run on stuff. Like, for instance, I never could figure out at the beginning of COVID yeah. why toilet paper yeah. couldn't be found. Why? Anywhere. Because people are stuck in their houses. That's why. No, because the 24 hour news cycle whether it's conservative or liberal 24 hour news needs to fill up airtime. So they make up, I'm not saying make up this stuff, but they, they, they in, other words, in other words, they said there, there's a run on toilet paper. So that was a wish fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah like you can't, you can't get toilet paper. So everyone's running to Costco to load up on toilet paper. When I, the, or you can't get bottled of water. You remember that, that first yeah. couple of weeks, you know, and I would go to Costco and I'd see some guy with like six cases of bottled water and four 32 whatever of toilet paper, you know. Wow. I'm amazed, you know. But, you know, or remember Thanksgiving. I said this back in maybe it was September when they went on the, there are not going to be any turkeys for Thanksgiving yeah. this year. Yeah. Sure, it didn't seem hard to get one if you wanted one. 
it, it, it's amazing. It's amazing how, uh, but I, I just couldn't figure out what, why the run on toilet paper. I mean, it, you know, you, toilet, paper. toilet paper and paper towels are two things you do not want to run out of. Well, if you feel that way, why is it you only buy one package of toilet paper at a time? You don't. You stock up. I mean, you could stock up on 40 <laughs> big, giant things of toilet paper. And eventually, one day, you'll be sitting there and going, Marjorie, we've run out of toilet paper. Well, mm -hmm. down at the last 10, you order more. Yeah. <laughs> She you know, I'll bet if you I'll bet if you went to Amazon right now, you could order a 32 pack of toilet paper and deliver it tomorrow. Of yeah. course. Yeah. But maybe you couldn't get it if there was a run on toilet. But, but toilet paper math is so hard because 12 rolls equals 18. And here's what always got me about toilet paper. Uh, what does it say on the outside? 500 sheets. Yeah. Or something like that, 300 sheets. How many of you use one square? <laughs> because technically, if you use one square and you could use that every time you went to the bathroom, you'd only need about one roll a year. Yeah. But no, I mean, you take it, you double it over and double it over. And then, you know. You know why? Because you don't want to get your hands dirty. <laughs> but that's what the sink is for. Well, but I'm saying, why do they make a big deal about 300, 400, 500 yeah. sheets when nobody uses one sheet of toilet paper? You know, I use one sheet of paper towels, yes. Yeah. In fact, recently, paper towels now come in the size where you can rip them off half as, half yeah. as much. Yeah, yeah. well, Costco sells those, the half, you know, the half yes. sheets. Because you were using too much before. Yeah. You know, the half sheet's just fine for most things. That I understand, okay, and then we still go through it, you know. How long, how long does it take us to get through a roll of, of uh, towels? Paper towels? Mm -hmm. About a day and a half. Really? Good Lord. Yeah. That's a lot of paper towels. Fast. Well, there, there are two of us here, and I use it to blow my nose, and she uses it to, I don't know, whatever. I use it for everything. Yeah. So, you know, and plus. Yeah, we at least three weeks for one little hint. Roll. Little hint. Uh, what brand do we use? We use the uh, Bounty. The Bounty. The Bounty, if you use it, just throw it in the dish, in the uh, uh, washer and dryer. It'll, it'll work. It it'll spread. come right out the same size it was, clean with, you know, and they, they, you can't destroy them really. It, it doesn't shred. Yeah. It's so you, you could, I mean, literally, you've washed. To things in the in the dryer and washer because they were in my pants and they come out and they're just fine they're clean all over again yeah, you could get the use of one roll of toilet paper uh, paper towels for the rest of your life. little hint folks. Not toilet anyway so how's everything in your part of town steve you're all the way downtown it's um you know it's not great it's uh i'm not going i mean we went out for my birthday last night we debated going but um you know i knew the restaurant and i knew they'd put us away from people but i'm laying low for a while i mean it's just amazing how many yeah, cases everyone out. i know has it. We, I know haven't, so we haven't people. gone out you know i have no desire to go out right yeah, I, I haven't left the house since i got home last tuesday yeah. Now, um, um, Jeff isn't with us today, although he said he would call. He's in Florida now. For about oh. A couple yeah. of months he's going to be down there. Now we mm. got to worry about him. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it, 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 but the thing is that I just think I have a theory that this, this uh, Omicron is really the COVID killer. This is what's coming along that everybody's going to get. Some people are going to sneeze a lot, you know, but it's not going to kill them. Okay. Uh, although you should still get vaccinated because you're going to get a bad case of COVID uh, instead of a light case of COVID if you don't. And uh, I think that everybody's going to kind of be, this is nature's vaccination. And I think it's going to happen that we're going to get herd immunity because all these people are getting what is it, oxymoron? What's the uh, Omicron? <laughs> Omicron. Yeah. I just think you're, assuming, you're assuming that this immunity that you get from getting it is going to last 
and it doesn't they're not sure well, it's how not long. gonna it's not gonna it's probably not gonna last but it's gonna last long enough to give us the herd immunity eh, you get what I i'm don't saying know. I don't and know. It, it, what what were you gonna say vernon well you guys are tennis fans right so you heard about yeah. Djokovic down in australia they are letting him in a court cleared his his medical exemption from covid because he was infected with the virus two months ago no he showed positive on his test that's it no, he came down with it supposedly. No, yeah. he tested tested positive. That was it. Having yeah, COVID. no one said that he came down with it. He tested positive. But he was asking for a medical exemption because of that. Which is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. they're making different rules for if you're an oh, yeah. tennis star. Well, if you're a self-entitled so, tennis player, you get a different it, rule than I would. It, exactly, and all the other tennis players have been vaccinated. Send them home. Hmm. You know, and he's the one, and not to get too, he's the one who comes up with these little, oh, my arm hurts. I got to take a time out. Oh, I've got to go and have a bathroom break. Oh, I've got to, you know, come on. Yeah. Well, go before you start playing, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, something that happened here in New York, this is something to talk about, that has happened here in New York. Shecky brought it up to me the other day. They have now made it legal in the state of New York for all these online betting things. Just in time for the Super Bowl and tonight's yeah. uh, <laughs> NCAA championship game. And yeah. the, the state of New York gets what, 51%? 51 percent of 51 the handle? 51% of the handle. Oh. Wow. Right. So, I mean, and, the, and they did it because New Jersey did it, and New Jersey was getting people driving over to New Jersey to bet, because you could then yeah. bet on your phone in New Jersey. Yeah. And I read somewhere, maybe it was September, October, the handle in New Jersey was $1 billion of people gambling wow. on sporting mm -hmm. events. Wow. So, I mean, so I, what the state I, got, the but they got a billion dollars. Does anybody think this is a good idea? I mean, this, this uh, I, I, I know people, I've known people, my friend Steve Gruber, who were, uh, uh, compulsive gamblers. And oh, but if you have a problem, call one eight hundred XYZ. Call one eight hundred. Satisfy our lawyers. <laughs> right. But I mean, I just think it's terrible. I think it's terrible that people can just on the on their phone, literally, eat up yeah. their life savings. Perhaps. Well, I'll, I'll lay I'll lay you ten to one that nobody calls that number. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, yes, sir, Vernon. How many How many states re allow businesses a le legal business of what they call check into cash, where you can mm -hmm. go in and write a check and they will not cash it for two weeks, but they charge this exorbitant interest rate. Oh, yeah. Okay, that used to be called usury, and yeah, now yeah. it's legal in Kentucky. Yeah. Wow. Long shirt. Long shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wait until they uh, say okay on you know these gambling things. You know, I mean, I it just it's just I I found this to be a, a bad thing. And all of a sudden, if you look at TV in New York, oh, you watching TV lately, Steve? That's everywhere. It, it's all, every it's other all ad is a betting ads. thing. It's well, all over yeah. so my, my social media. I keep seeing, you know, ads for it everywhere. You know? Television, everything. Foot, football game ads, they're all, are all yeah. gambling. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Uh, out in California, are you allowed to bet on those online betting things like FanDuel and, yep, and I, Caesars yep. and so on? Yep. Yes, you are. You must be. We see the commercials all the time. Yep. Yeah. Well, then you, then you, obviously you have it in Texas. Yeah, yeah. And, if, the, and if you take we're your the phone official and... betting betting company of the NFL. Edward, Wait a minute. Edward, where are you again? Flushing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Of all the places. Say that again. Flushing. Flushing. Yeah. But the phone the don't hey, but just, just make for grins, Edward. Say yeah. riboflavin. Riboflavin. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, the phone knows where you're at, because when I was in uh, Mexico, it wouldn't let me do it. When you're in Nevada, which is a legal gambling state, it won't let you do it. Yeah. So it knows. 
I mean, yeah, I, but I don't want to get a vaccine because they're putting a chip in my arm. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the gambling site knows where I am. Right. The whole thing knows where you are right down to the square foot. Yeah. But I, I just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm amazed that, uh, that, that they're allowing this sort of thing. And what's this going to do to OTB? With on track, mm. uh, off track betting. I mean, pretty well, much. I thought the off track betting is out of business in New York State. Well, they are out of business. I think so. They went bankrupt. Oh, I didn't know. Really? That. How do you go uh, bankrupt you go with bankrupt. a gambling well, yeah. organization? <laughs> How does Mr. Trump go bankrupt owning casinos in New Jersey? You That's know. Right. Well, you're right. Well, he blamed it on his brother. I think. Did, Did he? he? Did he blame it on his brother? Really? Yeah, his brother. His brother was running the Taj Mahal. Oh, tell tell uh, tell Shecky, tell these guys about the our our mayor, and what, the job he gave his brother. <laughs> He's in charge of his security detail. Oh, brother! And how much does that pay a year? Quarter of a million dollars a year. <laughs> wow! How much does the mayor make? Not that much, right? <laughs> I don't know. Wow. Wow. I just his love his previous job was like the city sealer in Kentucky or something. <laughs> <laughs> the city what? Um, I'm, I just can't remember exactly. He was like he was like the I'm gonna call it parking attendant, but he was like <laughs> in charge of parking for some college in um and now he's the head of security for down there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. But he had been a police officer and retired after 20 years, you know, okay. 10 years ago. All right. Oh, he he was. Well, he's well. Our, so therefore, you know, our current mayor thinks he's just he should be in charge of my security because well, I trust him. Well, our current well, mayor, was, training. Our current mayor was a cop, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. We just got a new mayor here, which is. Uh, and he's filling out his staff with all his cronies, as our former mayor did. Yeah. yeah. As you do. Well, the only thing I'm mad about, I was telling Marjorie this, I'm mad about with, with COVID, is that uh, at our age, it'd be nice to take a lot of trips. You know? And we can't do it. Yeah. You know? Oh. We could go to Europe, but they won't let us in. You know? I mean, it's... I won't even go to the airport. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Really? Well, the, the airlines are claiming the safest place to be is on an airplane because the air is filtered. Yeah. Hey, I ain't you know, going. That, that costs them money. They 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 use they turn the filtering down over the years because it they use it uses gas. The engines are what provide the air. Yeah. So they they started making it stuffier, if you will. Now they're claiming they've opened it up again. I'm not buying it. I don't know. They're well, not going to spend money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, oh. here's a question. So I'm on the airplane. It's full. Mm -hmm. The guy sitting next to me has a mask on, but he's not covering his nose. Oh, geez. Should I have said something or I, I just let it go? You should have said something. You should have said something. Well, okay. I don't know how many people feel that not covering your nose for comfort is is still giving a measure of protection and it isn't because i think the well, major thing, not. thing we're the major thing we're worried about is what's coming through Alex. people's nose it's not giving any protection i turned it you off want, my phone. you want to get that i no. <laughs> it was so no, i might have got i might have gotten up and asked the stewardess to ask him to put yeah. on yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, look i just you know i just lived with can i say i lived with it you know, <laughs> but I think don't don't more germs come out of your nose and come out of your mouth. Yes. Yeah, because you're yeah. breathing all the time. Yeah. yeah. Why you swab your nose? <laughs> yeah. 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 When we were flying back from Mexico, there was a couple of times where I had it down because I had been drinking, and the flight attendant was just kind of standing up there, and he's kind of like going, "Oh yeah, yeah, okay, all right." So you know, it, it's amazing, but that we we all get together here, and there's a lot of stuff to talk about. We just haven't talked about it, and we wind up at some point talking about COVID. Oh sure, it's kind of yeah. like old people at dinner. Eventually, if you stay there for dinner, yeah. uh, well, they will get around to discussing their doctors, their health issues, and yeah. their health issues. Yeah, their health. You know, yeah. Um, 
But I mean, th that's an important discussion. To, it's an important discussion today. It's the number one uh, thing to talk about these days with everybody. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, well. it, is, it would be more interesting to say, have you seen any good TV shows lately? Any good movies lately? Mm. How yeah. about that unemployment? It's dropped below 4%. Yeah. Yeah, I have an interview in two hours here, so I'm gonna. Yeah, but the jo the job the jobs added has gone down badly, so There's nobody to well, work. Yeah, no expectation. That's all. Yeah, expectation is bullshit. Just don't they think it's going to happen? It's crazy. Well, yeah. he, what's interesting is if if there are less job new jobs added, and yet there are more jobs open. Mm -hmm then apparently the reason jobs have not been added is because people are not going after them. There was something on 60 Minutes yes, or yesterday about that, yeah. Yeah, that, that, uh, that uh, the, most of the people today uh, are, are trying to find other ways to make a living, mm. okay? Then the, yeah. The, yeah, the, gambling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Oops. Here, here we go. Here comes, here's Darla. Darla. <laughs> here, here's Darla. Hi, Mandy. Welcome to the He-Man Woman Haters Club. Yeah. <laughs> it's Darla, ladies and gentlemen. How are you, Mandy? Hello, how are y'all? Yeah, yeah. A little late today to the class. Yeah, yeah. It's Cray-Cray Town up in here. It's Cray-Cray Town. <laughs> A time of year, Marjorie knows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. You have you have the same problem. You say you got a lot oh. of stuff to do tomorrow. Wow. Hey, got to close the books. Yeah. And it doesn't help that my coworker has been out for two weeks with the, right. the play. Really? <laughs> with with COVID. Yeah. Oh boy. So, yeah. I'm, but I'm I'm hanging in there. But how you, are y'all? You haven't caught it at all. You've been fine. <laughs> Yeah. Thankfully, very lucky. How, how close did your coworker work with you in proximity? She's kind of down the hall. I don't really oh, get okay. into it. All right. Yeah. Right before she started feeling bad, and then she tried to come in that Tuesday after Christmas. Are you the only one in the office space that you're in? No, there's other people here. So she actually tried to come in after she had gone on the way in to get tested. And <laughs> <laughs> Please leave until you have, but it's, yeah. she's been, so, but she, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully yeah. she gets back. Yeah. But anyway, so I mean, it's, uh, anybody see any good TV shows lately? Did we watch anything, Marjorie? That they should 18, well, 19, 1883 we're 83. watching, which is very good. Anybody watching that? Okay. I'm still, I'm still, yeah, watch that. I don't well, care for the narration by the that, that, the that woman at all. You the, don't like the her daughter. narration? I like it. Ah, it's so uh, unbelievable that this gorgeous, beautiful young woman is uh, out there in the West. Oh, come on. They were, <laughs> it's all Hollywood. Well, uh, don't you think there were some good-looking women back then who were pioneers? No. No. Nah. <laughs> Do you think they all look like uh, Marjorie Maine? Marjorie Maine, yeah, like Calamity Jane. Yes, yes. Yeah, they all look like that. You don't think, yeah, you don't think that there was maybe like one Bay. really attractive blonde who went with her parents across the prairie? Never. Uh, <laughs> okay. Never. I like the show. It's the beginning, so I didn't get to hear about how uh, Shecky's cruise was. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a rerun of the <laughs> beginning of the show. Jackie, Sorry. How, how was your I'll cruise? just message Becky independently <laughs> and find out. The cruise, okay. as I just a very quick, it was not spectacular, but it was good. And the thing I didn't bring up is we were a group of 35 people, and there was a, an American historian as part of our group. And he would do a two-hour lecture every day. Oh, wow. cool. And that was worth the price of admission. Wow. Oh, very good. By the way, we're being joined by 
Albert okay. Reynoso, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Hello. Albert. Oh, uh, sorry, so late, but I had to do some weeding. So <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, weeding's more important than us, huh? Weeding is more important than anything. Oh, I, I totally buy that. You see? And he lives down in Florida. Let's see here. There's nobody else here from Florida. So he's in Florida. You used to keep he's staying away from people. Mm, not really. Why? There's a thing <laughs> called COVID out there. Not in my state. <laughs> nah. it ain't here. Hey, Florida's gonna catch Texas pretty soon. Yeah. I hope so. We're number one. <laughs> gonna be. <laughs> Wait a minute, down in Florida, they don't talk with a southern accent. Really? They're all Jews the from case. New York. Yeah, they're all no. Jews from New York. No, 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 no. The people that were from here, they talk with us. Uh, this is the Deep South. I don't know why people don't realize that. Florida this is, is the Deep, deep South. south. Deep, yeah. Is it really? Yes. You can't get any deeper than Florida. That's right. This is this is <laughs> the capital of of racism, of white supremacists. This is the capital of uh, I don't do anything the government tells me. Is there a this reason the why South, you baby? moved? Is there a reason why you moved there? Uh, yeah, because I have uh, my wife's family lives here, and um, no taxes. Yeah. And weed. You know, there's that too. And weed. <laughs> yeah. And weed. Well, We've toyed with the idea of just getting an apartment or a little condo down there and being our our mailing address, if you will, because of the tax issues. Yeah, well, you know, I'm thinking well, you, Marjorie, you, we you, should if, we should think about it because really, if you think about, it, we can keep the apartment because we're only going to be paying five hundred dollars a month. Right. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. Maybe eight. Maybe eight hundred dollars a month. That's <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and the is that settled? No, well, the no, landlord, I'll the landlord is I refusing to sign the lease, but he's setting for he would, and so the judge approved the the whole thing. So it's case law. He has to give us a lease. Wow. Yeah. So you can't just say no. So next thing, I guess we go to the judge and say order him, and then if he doesn't, they can throw him in jail. Hmm. You know. So yeah. I mean, it it. Can you imagine our life's going to be a living hell here if we if we get that rent? Yeah. Could you fix the pipes? No. no. <laughs> you know. <laughs> they got no choice but to fix it. That's their job. Yeah. You're paying I, them for that. I know. <laughs> but I mean, it's just it just it's it it just keeps getting ridiculous. But I mean, the ridiculous part about it is the judge ordering. That the rent here is eight hundred dollars at five hundred dollars a month. Does the landlord own the whole building or that particular unit? The no, whole this is, the whole building. So what? What's the normal rent in this building? Well, <laughs> uh, the normal rent. I it depends. You know, well, there's apartments here control, that are going for seven thousand dollars. Think about anymore in the city yeah. is maybe eight hundred dollars for a two bedroom. Rent stabilization, which they still give out in the city, is maybe what 1500 for a two bedroom Jeez. and then everyone else is paying 7000 wow i mean yeah. it, it, there, are, there there are apartments in this apartment house that are $7000 a month jesus now ours would be i'm sure 7 or 8 because yeah we have a view you couldn't buy you know mm -hmm. and uh it, it's up on the top floor but um uh, the whole thing was the judge decided to give the order for the $500 price based on what the price was back in 2003, I think. No, 10. 2000, wait a minute, oh, excuse me, 2003. No, 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 that's a different story, Marjorie. 2010, the three is when it was $500. Wow. However, the, the, they're going to appeal it. And by appealing it, they probably will get a different price, which is the lowest possible price for a apartment in this unit, like eyes, all the eyes in our building. Mm -hmm. The lowest price in 2010, and that was $800. Wow. So they could win, and we'd have to pay $800. Yeah, that that's still a big win for you. <laughs> oh yeah, twenty five hundred square feet. Right. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, um, it, it, it just, this thing just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on. And, on. and I just want it over with. Give me my fucking lease and leave me alone. Just, just settle with the 800. You're still ahead. I, right. I, I, yeah. Be but, done with it. Yeah. yeah but we're not going to, we're not going to pay that much yet because yeah. they haven't gone to the appeals court, you know, mm-hmm. but the appeals court, um, you gotta tell you, it's very your funny. lawyer. It's very funny. The landlord here, I was reading this to some friends the other day. It's, it's of course case record now in the, in the, uh, uh, decision the judge made, he put a special part a special paragraph saying it should be known that the landlord against the advice of his lawyers wrote a letter to this judge and threatened him and threatened oh. him he oh. said i can get your job wow oh. i can get you fired and he put this in the decision so that any appellate court judge who reads this right right this decision is wow. going to see what these guys did and then he's not going to be very happy that this guy said i can get your job what a maroon <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so he kind of, and then the two days later, the judge writes the decision for $500. Yeah. And he, the reason he put that in there, he says, I don't want anybody to think I'm not being transparent. Mm. And there's no ulterior motive to my judgment here. Okay. But he, I think he put that in there. So future judges would see what wow. the landlord did. So it's, it's really, it's a comedy of errors. Okay. Yeah, an expensive comedy of errors, but a comedy of errors anyway. You know, uh, it's on, on our behalf. So, what have you? So, um, let me see here. Anything else happening in the world? Well, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> um, I just Man, like Mandy's it. Got her hand up. Like, what? Oh, oh, Mandy. Mandy's got her hand up. Yes, Mandy <laughs> in the first row. <laughs> Maybe I, it may just be me and a couple other people that really care about this, but the Natty tonight, UGA, yeah. hello. Go oh, dogs. Good, Georgia, right? Oh, right Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. What is this? Where my daughter goes. Yeah, it's a double A game. The Confederate Bowl. <laughs> yeah. The SEC I'm, championship. I'm actually going to my best friend's house, who is a huge Alabama fan, to watch it. Oh, geez. Should be fun. <laughs> oh, boy. So it's Georgia versus who? Alabama. 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 No. Oh. Yeah. Alabama. But my daughter had gotten a ticket. She had gotten a ticket and she sold it for like five hundred dollars. Oh, wow. wow. Really? How'd she no. get it? I mean, she bought a ticket. No, she was like just in a lottery because she's a senior, oh. so she was just automatically like in a lottery, and she got picked, and then she didn't even have to pay for it. Taco Bell bought them all for the senior class. Oh. Wow. So she just made money. <laughs> <laughs> She's allowed to do that, right? Well, they frown upon it. <laughs> <laughs> they say oh, you may no. lose your privileges to buy student tickets in the future. And she's like, well, I'm graduating in four months. I don't care. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Be a bunch of old people sitting in the student oh, section. Marjorie, so what is one ticket? <laughs> Mar- it's like it one ticket. And I sold it too cheap. Uh, yeah. Marjorie, are we going to have to watch the Australian Open here? I will. Even with Djokovic playing, or are you going to turn it off when he's on? No, no, I'll watch it. But it's not a good thing that he's going to play. What? He's allowed to stay in Australia, but it's not a given that he's going to play. Mm. Oh. Is it, so well, it's be- still up in the air. Because the, I guess the officials have to decide whether he can play or not. It's the government versus the Australian Open. Yeah. Yeah. Now, does the Open want him to play? Of course. It's a, it's a, you know. Big draw. He's the number one player. In the world. Well, we can, we can see to that, you know. Well, I don't, I don't believe in giving him special privileges. Yeah. I don't either. Not right. But then again, you know, Shecky, who knows everything about this kind of thing uh, once informed me and you were absolutely right about sports in general, the sports get away with murder because 
not the fact that there are sports fans, but gambling is yeah. there's a whole industry in gambling based Money. on sports. Otherwise, why do we care if, oh, I don't know, somebody's taking some kind of performance enhancing drug? It just makes for a better game for us, the spectator, right? No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. It does not. Hey, a guy's juiced up on goofballs playing tennis, man. <laughs> boom, 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 you know. <laughs> But it, but it, all it matters to are the people who are gambling, mm-hmm. you know, because it then changes the odds. You know, the yeah. odds are not predictable, as predictable as they would be. But does anybody here gamble at all? Well, I told you, I took $1,500 gambling money on the cruise, never went into the casino. Right. right. I never do. Len, never do, well. do, you, do you gamble? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I love sitting at a blackjack table. I go to Reno. Well, a that's a di- that's a different thing. I'm talking about gambling on well, games, betting. I, on- I I actually do, but I I have <laughs> my friends think I'm nuts, but I just got a quarter, like twenty five. Okay, seconds. all right, all right. So <laughs> you, you just a fun better. Exactly. Well, it's like Shecky he goes on the cruise. He'll gamble, but he has a certain little amount of money he brings yeah. with him for that specific purpose. Yeah, but I just didn't like the look of the casino because of COVID. I admit that. That you're mm-hmm. sitting at a table with six strangers. Yeah, playing in Reno, blackjack. Far apart. In Reno, they have um, uh, partitions up between each of the seats. Yeah. Not on the cruise ship. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, I, uh, um, you know, when I used to go to Tahoe, for instance, to gamble, uh, to spend some time, I would bring along, I would say, okay, I've got 100 bucks. I'll bet this till it's gone, mm-hmm. you know, but that's all. That's what I did. You I've know. always done that. I've never taken money out once I'm up there. I and bring it, what I intend to lose. If I lose it, I had a good time. I'm done. You if can, I can play, if I can play for an hour and win or lose 200 bucks, I had a nice yeah. hour. Agreed. Well, it's, it's entertainment is what it is. Yeah. 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 How about you, Albert? Like, Do you gamble at all or have you ever gambled on the ship? Uh, yeah, I have. I, I like I like playing some games, but the the there's no excitement for me in in winning or losing money. That, I'm not money motivated. Obviously, I I work for serious. <laughs> <you know. laughs> but that was a hell of a gamble you made in Tahoe. Didn't you get married there last time you were there? Yeah, 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 oh. yeah. yeah. I lost. Down. I lost. <laughs> and we both. <laughs> but. Uh, um, you know, I mean, I, I, it's, it's uh, I just, uh, the thing about gambling is, is that the, tr- the addicted gambler gets a thrill out of winning. It's the endorphin that sure. you're dealing with here. It's really kind of like a drug high, not a, not a money high, but also you get just as much of a, a, a thrill losing as you do winning. Yes. I've talked to addicted gamblers. They said that either way they get, you know, those endorphins. Mm. And um, I know you say, well, how can they do it losing? Because that's, that has that same rush to it as winning. I know for you, you don't think that Albert. And I don't think that way. Uh, I don't gamble because losing is far worse than winning, you know? And, and so I just know that's why I don't gamble. You know, um, I don't mind saying, Hey, I lost a hundred dollars at the table last night, you know, mm-hmm. that I don't mind, but being, having to say to my family, I just, I lost the, I sold the children, <laughs> you know, is a bit much, you know, and I knew an addicted gambler who I went to Vegas with him. I didn't know how addicted he was. He, in the first night, he said, I'm going out for a few hours. He didn't come back for three days. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So he just yeah. got lost and he got into this thing. And he, you know, he came back and he lost all his money, you know. Uh, and I, uh, he finally went to Gamblers Anonymous and that saved his life. It was cancer that killed him. Mm. You know. Oh. Anyway. Uh, huh. So. Anyway, uh, Steve, you got to come up and see us eventually. When I'm willing to get in the subway, but that's I, I, not- I know I'm not willing. I want to go out and see Shecky and, and help him set up his computer. 
and I'm not getting on the subway yet. Sure. You know? uh, and I know wearing a mask and then I'll probably be safe, but I'm not going to take the chance because and you shouldn't. What? You should not. I said right. that to you earlier today. Well, I mean, people are just getting this. It's so infectious. Mm -hmm. I mean, a million people in New York City over the last two weeks. Yeah, they must have all been in Times Square to watch a ball drop off a building. (laughs) (laughs) Can't you just hire a can't you just hire a car, Alex? What what, what'd you say? Can't you just hire a car to go out to Shecky? Yeah, yeah, how much that would cost? (laughs) (laughs) Be a hundred dollars out to Shecky's. And how was that how was that any safer? You don't know what's in blue. Right. Well, it's safe. I'll tell you where it's safer if you take a cab because the cabs have those, mm-hmm. cabs have those guards <laughs> to protect them. Uh, they're very safe. They're incredible. Not only are they bulletproof. Yeah, but you don't know who was sitting yeah, in that who was seat there before? right before you. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll go in spraying. Yeah. <laughs> have Something like that. Hey, listen, I just looked at the clock. We've run out of time. Well, we haven't run out of time. We could do this for hours and hours and hours, but I think the rest of you have some lives to get back to here. <laughs> nah. <laughs> no, absolutely. Got to do not. more weeding. It's huh? just about Happy supper time for me. And- what what what'd you say, Mandy? I was just going to say happy anniversary to Lynn. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, happy anniversary happy to Lynn. Anniversary. Uh, well, so you have something to do tonight. <laughs> uh, well wait a minute it was steve bender's uh birthday yesterday yes, and it was len birthday. frisco's anniversary today yep well happy anniversary len of course you know that because you're pals now because you hung out <laughs> uh, totally. Totally. Yeah. my birthday on saturday all right oh, really oh, happy right. Birthday. how many how many years have you been married uh, uh seven Seven. What's that got to do with my birthday? (laughs) (laughs) Marjorie and I have been married how many years now? Let's see if he remembers. I Uh, think it's 11. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 Because Albert remembers when he got married. I can't remember. I can't believe it's been that long ago since you got married. I just remember when you were calling her girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I still call her girlfriend occasionally. You know, yeah. um, or wife, and I picked up that term girlfriend from Sheck. You'll know this Meryl Marco, who used to refer to Letterman as boyfriend. Mm. You know, so she when she would talk to me, but when she talked to me about him once, she the boyfriend, or would then they call him host boy too, or something. We called him host boy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, Charlie Wallace, thank you. I always love having you here. Um, Edward Berger. That's right. <laughs> I'm O'Flavin. I'm O'Flavin. <laughs> uh, Vernon Nunn, Scott Boddicker down in Texas, uh, Shecky from over there in Queens, Len LaFrisco from California, Steve Bender from downtown uh marjorie from the other room <laughs> um mandy from georgia and albert from florida we got people from all over the country today this is really yeah. nice this is great i love this show i just i adore this show i i look this i look forward to we um, all do we all do. i know you do anyway everybody you're going get- down charlie this weekend That's- <laughs> <laughs> we'll see Depends on which cowboy team shows up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, give a big wave goodbye, okay? Okay. Go everybody. dogs. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye-bye. see you later. <laughs>